Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. It's been a while since I've done my last movie review, mostly because I've been too busy studying for the finals at my college, which I'm finally finished, thank God. On top of that, I had to help out with the family packing up, cleaning up, and moving it to their new place in Lancaster for my grandma, my aunt, my uncle, my brother, and also, we had to celebrate my sister's birthday, as well as my best friend's birthday, during that week. And I had a wonderful time. It was a blast. And I had a great time with the family. Because we hardly ever go out anymore nowadays. But I got to see... But everybody's talking about one of the best superheroines of all time. And they really knocked it out of the park this time around for DC. And that is the movie Wonder Woman. An Amazonian warrior princess who fights courage, wisdom, power, grace, and wonder. That's right. Yep, and she's been around since 1941, 75 years ago. And also was considered to be the first um, female superhero that we ever had. And that's why we need more uh, female superheroines like Wonder Woman. Anyway, I actually grew up watching the TV series that's based on the comics, uh, Wonder Woman with Linda Carter. Yep, where she plays both uh, Diana Prince, the secretary, and, and, and of course, Wonder Woman, the Amazonian princess, who's a warrior. She has a tiara, those shields uh, that's on her wrist, as well as her... Uh, her dress that's um, that has a lot of bust plates and and it, it looks so uh, all metal and steel all the way around all in colors even has uh, the W logo and she has a sword with a shield also her lasso yeah the rope which she uses so she can grab somebody or even try to grab someone so they can tell them the truth and yes she can fly well actually she can jump real high that's a strong character right there but the 70's version was a lot different I mean it was close enough to being like the comics as as we speak and I'm really happy though that this turns out to be a lot better than I thought, and I'm glad it did. I, I thought it was really good. Because, you know, DC was having some problems a lot lately. Especially last year with Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, and Suicide Squad. But on top of those, I actually didn't mind Suicide Squad. I thought it was a decent film, despite of its problems, with all the editing and not enough screen time with the Joker and and all these other problems with the villain uh, so on and so forth that went into it um, but I enjoyed it for what it was Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice on the other hand was a huge mess and I mean it was a huge mess and in my opinion I didn't think Affleck was the best choice for Batman in my opinion, I mean, if you think about it this way, it would always be Michael Keaton for me. Same goes with Christian Bale, because those two are my favorites. Uh, I also didn't mind Adam West, too, because I know he played him in the 60s series, yeah, which is very campy. And I know there were others that came before that, which had all the serials that came out way back. Um, and um, 
I know we had the later ones uh, after Michael Keaton, yeah, before Christian Bale, you know, with Bell Kilmer, which I thought Bell Kilmer did a great job after Michael Keaton. Um, not as good as Michael Keaton, but still, he was getting there. Uh, George Clooney was the wrong choice for Batman, but at least he understands. Um, but everything just turned out great. And um, and I, I would feel the same way with Superman that was played by um, Henry Cavill. Because if you ask me, I, I kind of prefer Christopher Reeve and Brendan Rout, you know, for, which he was in Superman Returns, when he played um, both Clark Kent and Superman. He was almost closer to be like uh, Christopher Reeve when he played both Clark Kent and Superman. Yeah. But this time, we get um, Gail Godot playing Wonder Woman, and I think she's close enough to being as good as uh, Linda Carter was, and I'll be honest with you. She was the best thing out of Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. I mean, at least she got the fight, even though she was only there for like, I believe, 11 minutes of screen time or so, give or take. I mean, at least she got the fight, going after uh, Doomsday, which wasn't done very well. Yeah, Doomsday. I mean, I had a problem with uh, Jesse Eisenberg's character, uh, Lex Luthor Jr. Yeah, I think he was supposed to be the son of Lex Luthor. And... I know, I mean, he was completely over the top. He was really bad in the film, and no doubt about it, this was one of his worst performances I've ever seen. And I, I can't lie. It, he was terrible in the film. And that movie had tons of fucking problems. And that's such a shame, because it could have been a good film. It should have been a good movie. I wanted it to be good. Despite of what was going on here with the casting choices. I mean, I'm cool with having Amy Adams playing Lois Lane because actually, in my opinion, she is the right choice. Even if she doesn't have black hair. Still, I thought she did a great job playing uh, Lois Lane. And also, um, I also didn't mind Jeremy Irons playing uh, Alfred. Yeah, that's not a good choice. Uh, right next to um, to uh, Michael Golf and uh, yeah, right next to Michael Golf and as well as uh, Michael Caine. So anyway, <laughs> I know I, I I kept talking more about that, but that's all right. But she was the best thing about the film. The rest of the film was just a mess. It could have done so much better. But it just suffers. It was pretty forced too. So I, I feel bad for for what Zack Snyder's been doing. I mean, now that he lost his daughter, yeah, I feel bad for him too. And also David S. Goyer, yeah, he could have wrote a better script, but this just wasn't perfect for him. I don't know. Um, I know there's going to be the new uh, Justice League coming out. And I hope this one will turn out okay, for better or worse. I don't know, but I'll see what, for what I think about it. But nevertheless, I love DC. I love Marvel. I love all superhero movies, whatever is good or bad. Because, yes, we do get bad ones, too. But no matter what, I always love superhero movies. I love comic book heroes as we know it, okay? I used to have comic books uh, when I was little, but not anymore. But I still love them, I still enjoy them, and I'm going to keep it that way. So no more arguments on saying which one is better, because we don't need that. And on top of that too, when this movie came out, I know there was a lot of controversy that went into it. I know people are like talking about that there was a screening that they had when this movie came out. The first screening where 
where they only had uh, only women. So yes, only women can see Wonder Woman, but men are not allowed. Which that happened at the the Alamo Draft House in Austin, Texas. Which I know that sucks, but don't worry, we all had a chance, and I and I'm one of them. So I, I got to see the movie in North Hollywood, and we all had a good time. I actually saw this movie with my father, along with my sister, as well as his friend, and her son, and we had a good time. Everything was great. So, <laughs> yeah, and plus they had a controversy on, on Gail Godot's uh, portrayal of Wonder Woman, mostly because she's from Israel. She did serve uh, the military, as we know it, and that was back in 2006. So I know it, it gets to the point where there was actually a war going on. Well, you know what? Um, I don't want to get into that because it's just too much uh, PC and political uh, uh, propaganda that we're going for and I just don't want to get into it but the fact is I want to get into this movie and that's why I'm gonna review it right now so sorry I'm taking so long but I had to get to it stars Gail Godot Chris Prime who was from the movie Star Trek, who played uh, the young Captain Kirk. Robin Wright, been best known for her role in as Buttercup in the film The Princess Bride, which is celebrating its 30th anniversary this year, by the way. Danny Houston, who's been in films like uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine, which was a bad film, no doubt about it. Uh, not to mention he was in the film Hitchcock and Edge of Darkness. David Foulis, which surprisingly enough is, was in a film called The Island of Dr. Maru. Connie Nielsen. Elena Anaya. Lucy Davis. Sid Tamaku. And Ewan Bremner. It's written by Alan Heinberg, with the story uh, written by Zack Snyder and, and Jason Fuchs, and it's directed by Patty Jenkins, who did the movie Monster, which stars uh, Academy Award winner Charlie Farron and Christina Ricci. The movie begins when a young woman named Diana Prince, who's played by Gil Godot, who was born and raised on an island called Firmicera, which is home of the Amazons. She's, she's also known as a warrior woman named Wonder Woman that was created by the gods of Mount Olympus to protect humankind against corruption of the god of war himself, Arius, who is responsible for, for killing, slaughtering, men, women, and children using all the soldiers to, to create the battle of war which which is completely brutal and on top of that it will consider to be the end of the world as we know it. In fact Arius was also responsible for wounding and killing all the gods including the his father Zeus and Arius, of course, is her half-brother. So, in the distant past, Diana was a little girl. She decided to do some training with her aunt, General Antope, who was played by Robert Wright. Unfortunately, her mother, Queen Hippolyta, refused to allow it, because that's when something bad is going to happen next. But they never know about that. Anyway, as she grew older, still training with her aunt, suddenly uh, Diana all of a sudden Diana suddenly had spotted a boy. Um, 
So, as she grew older, as a young, as she grew older, Diana suddenly rescues a young pilot who's a man named Steve Trevor, who's played by Chris Pine, who just crashes his plane on the island off the coast of Femisera, who suddenly the island with suddenly the islands being attacked by German soldiers that's pursuing Steve but which all the Amazons had engaged and killed all the soldiers which only left uh, her aunt uh, and Tope kill trying to protect uh, Diana yeah it turns out that um, Steve Trevor actually works um, for the United States uh, Air Military and he's also considered to be an Allied spy. He was chosen to steal a new he was chosen to stole a notebook from a German scientist named Dr. Isabel Maru, who's played by uh, Elena Anaya. And she decided to uh, do some research by finding a mustard gas that's considered to be deadly and enough to to wipe out everyone with the help of General Erich uh, Ludendorff which Diana had believed that Arius was responsible for the entire war so that includes that so Diana decided to to go with uh, Steve on a mission to London trying to to find uh, the secrets behind the notebook by um, by all the superiors at the Imperial War Cabinet which includes Sir Patrick uh, Morgan who's played by um, who's played by David Fewis which he was actually trying to negotiate with the Germany he was trying to negotiate with Germany and while Steve actually believes that Ludendorff will complete by using all the gas to wipe him off. So Diana of course um, decided to fight back by actually going after the entire war which is at no man's land all complete and that's where we get to see the battle where she actually teams up with Steve and his crew that he brought in to join in for the for the ride. And yeah, they're trying to save everybody, including the, the women and children. And it was like a huge battle right there. You know, where she finally uh, reveals herself, you know, with uh, the shield, the sword, the tiara, the shields that she has uh, in her, the the shield brace that she has, uh, and you know the shield brace, and she goes around attacking all the soldiers completely. It was just amazing. You wouldn't believe it. So um, they won the war. Well at this rate one war that's in no man's land so they celebrate by uh, dancing and actually uh, having breakfast I mean that's basically what they do so which there was a scene in the movie where Diana where Steve actually teaches Diana how to dance exactly how they they do it and it, it was just amazing especially when it started snowing when that happened it's something so they were getting to their next mission so it's up to Wonder Woman along with Steve and the rest of the game to stop Ludendorff along with Dr. Poison to end all wars and stop them from creating all the mustard gas from spreading all around the country and killing them so let's leave it at this way and I gotta say this this movie is as powerful as it can be 
And out of all the superhero films I've seen for the past couple years or so, even more actually, ever since I was a kid, this was amazing. It, it was it was really well made, well done. I mean, yeah, there was a few nitpicks here and there with uh, some of the destruction, lots of CGI that's put into it, which is good. I mean, the CGI wasn't that bad this time around. In fact, the CGI in this movie actually looks quite impressive compared to the CGI that was in Batman vs. Superman. Now, I thought the CGI in that movie was really horrible. And I mean it. It was really horrible. It, it just seemed like they just didn't do much justice to it. That's the problem. <laughs> but I thought all those battles that they put into the film, I thought it really worked. And I thought it was interesting to see what Wo Wonder Woman had to offer. And the way I saw it, though, I thought it really was, was just as impressive as it could be with those destructions and and all those shots they put into it and how colorful this movie looked so it's not just uh, it doesn't have that dark blue tint that they use in the film like like most of the other superhero films have I mean especially uh, Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice or even S Suicide Squad when it comes to the the dark blue tint or hell, yeah, you can even throw in uh, some of the other films like, I think Dark Knight had that along with uh, um, The Dark Knight Rises. I think Batman Begins might have had it. Well, either way, but they, they did have a lot of color, had a lot of darkness and all of that combined. I mean, yeah, you can even say the same thing with all the other uh, Marvel superhero films because they would do the same thing too. But this was very impressive. Um... I thought Gail Godot did a great job playing uh, Diana Prince and Wonder Woman. It definitely shows. I mean, they she really uh, nails it to the park. I mean, her acting wasn't perfect, I'll give you that. But no matter what she did, she, she plays her exactly what Wonder Woman should be. I mean, she's no Linda Carter, but she's getting there. Uh, Chris Pine did a great job playing... Uh, the pilot, uh, Steve Trevor, it also proves that he's not a weak character like they expected him to be. He's actually more uh, roguish, as he even described himself. I mean, he's more of, he's basically what he was. I mean, he's a pilot who's a spy, but he's trying to stop um, Ludendorff and Dr. Poison from spreading all the gas that they created using that... Uh, particular uh, dis destructions and, and all of that you know and they're trying to stop all the wars that from happening and it shows and the fact that he needed someone to help I mean I know it, it wasn't easy but they had to do whatever they can to stop all wars all, also the entire cast was great I'll give you that I, I thought Connie Nielsen did a great job um, Along with Robin Wright, I mean, sad that that her character uh, got killed off s so early, but but it had to happen anyway. I mean, she's still she was the bravest uh, aunt and mentor for for Diana, so it's good that we actually have uh, we have her to join in to help her. Um, there's also some supporting cast, including uh, Elta Candy, played by Lucy Davis. I mean, she's basically a friendly uh, secretary of, of Steve Trevor's. Also be friends with Diana as well. I mean, there was even a scene where <laughs> she had to carry the, the sword and, and the shield as well. Because, unfortunately, uh, she was in disguise by wearing... Uh, a beautiful woman's suit that she had to dress. Yeah, she was acting like a secretary. And, um, but she had trouble trying to hide her identity, <laughs> so it wasn't easy. And I remember there was even a scene where, where, um, both Steve and, and Diana actually worked together to stop those guys from actually stealing the, 
the book that, that he has, so the notebook of Dr. Poison. I thought that was amazing too, and and Etta Kenna j joins in for the ride, and there's even um, there, there's also all of his um, his crew. You got the chief. You also got Charlie, who's a sharpshooter, and you even got uh, an actor named Samir. And I, I thought, wow. <laughs> What a crew. As for the villains in the film, I'll be honest with you, they're not that bad. I mean, yeah, they're not as strong as, as we expected it to be, but I don't think they're not that weak either. I mean, but I would say this though, Luchendorf uh, was a bit stronger. I mean, he's Iron Fist, he's sort of like uh, the Hulk in a way. Well, not really, but almost. The fact that uh, he takes this drug that uh, Dr. Poison had created that makes him go completely strong, but it only takes a while to do so. I mean, like, he can only be strong for only just, um, like, maybe a, a couple minutes or so. I mean, give or take. So he goes around just uh, crushing guns, uh, smashing tables and walls and all of that. Uh, as for Dr. Poison, she's basically what she is. She's a scientist, you know, creating the perfect uh, gas to to wipe out uh, all of humanity as we know it. And the fact that her character is badly scarred, they gave her that uh, ceramic mask to cover the the lips and and the cheekbone on the side. And so that way, you know, it could heal it completely. So that's what we got. And Arius is just basically, as we know it, the god of war, creating all wars com completely. Well, but you never know. Uh, but other than that, though, um, I really enjoyed the movie. I really loved it. It's amazing, powerful. It's great to see that um, DC has finally got a good movie after all this time. After all the problems that they've been going through, at least we finally got one. Especially since it's part of the, the DC EU. Yeah, that's their own universe, just like Marvel has their MCU. Yeah, in that sort of way. And it's great to see that Wonder Woman finally got her first film. After all these years. I mean, yes, we had the 1974 film with Kathy Lee Crosby, but that's a TV film. And I know we have the Linda Carter series, which I prefer. But, and I know we also had the 2011 uh, TV pilot that never aired, by the way. I mean, it was going to become a series, but that never happened. I mean, no doubt about it, though, Wonder Woman is strong, beauty, and... She, she's definitely a badass right there, the way we saw it. And it was really epic, no doubt about it. I love the score that's done by Looper Grayson Williams. It, it just feels exactly as heroic as it could be when they uh, did the score between scenes after scene. Uh, has some wonderful cinematography by Matthew Jensen. Because you could tell how colorful it looked. I mean, no matter what uh, color that they chose, it just looks beautiful. So it's not just uh, your traditional uh, dark blue tint that they had to use in the film. So it gets a lot brighter, and it just looks as breathtaking and beautiful as ever. I'm just happy that we finally got a good DC film that we've all been waiting for. And I hope that we get more films like this pretty soon. I mean, especially with Justice League coming out. But I'm not so sure how that's going to turn out. But we'll see. But either way, I definitely recommend the film. Definitely go see the film for yourself. Especially you guys out there. Not just females. Because it's for everybody. 
whatever is men, women, and children, go see the film for yourself. You won't be disappointed. So anyway, I give the film Wonder Woman five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.